everybody, welcome back to Somi Sunshine. As always, we're filming in Somi Sunshine HQ today, and we've got the lovely Celia and Ruth packing all your orders, so you might hear some packing in the background. Um, once again, as always, thank you so much for all your orders. So today's video, we decided we were gonna do a bit of summer, summer sewing, but the weather is awful. So we lack inspiration there because it's raining outside today. So instead, we've decided to do a little video about jersey fabrics. And that's because I get asked quite a lot how to, to work out like the stretch percentages on jersey. So I thought today what I could do is show you how I work it out. Um, and if you still don't want to work it out yourself at Samey Sunshine on all of our jersey or knit listings and even on the woven fabrics that have elastane in them, I always put the stretch percentage there for you, which helps you to choose what pattern is suitable for that fabric. Um, all the pattern companies, if they w require a fabric with some stretch, they'll say what the stretch percentage should be um, for the pattern to work for you. So always check that out and then you can have a look at the listing. But if you're out and about um, sh shopping for fabric elsewhere, hopefully this will make you feel a bit confident to work out the stretch percentage yourself. So as I already mentioned, there is obviously you can get stretch with a woven fabric when it's got like a last stain added into the structure. But today we're going to focus purely on jersey knit fabrics. So they, the main difference between fabrics, the first thing you look at is whether it's a woven or a jersey fabric. So with jersey fabric, what it is, is that it's made by using a continuous um, yarn, which is looped together, and that gives that knit look to it, and that's why it has um, the stretch as well. So I work out my stretch percentages all the time at Somi Sunshine, they're always on the listing, but just in case you want to double check or you're out shopping for fabric and you don't have access to any resources, you can just do this with your simple, with a tape measure. And what you're going to do is obviously the edge of the fabric is going to be lined up with zero and you want to hold that bit and then you go you want your other finger to get to the 10 point which is just where this rainbow is here and then what you're going to do is hold it on the zero and then stretch from the 10 to whatever number it gets to so on the tape measure there you can see this is as far as it will stretch and then it gets to 14 and because we've gone from 10 to 14 that means that it's stretched 40 percent if it only went up to the 12 that's 20 percent or if it went up to 13 it'd be 30 percent and so on so it's quite easy to work out so if it went all the way to 20 for example then it's got 100 percent stretch and then you do it the same way along the crosswise grain you will normally find that the crosswise is more stretchy um, so again exactly the same you want your finger at the zero you want to go up to the 10 point and then you hold obviously at the 10 and then you pull till you feel no more resistance again I would say that's again 40% you don't want to overstretch it um, because obviously the fabric hat does have a limit um, and then like I said you also will find a lot of fabric description saying you know good stretch good recovery and the recovery just means that you know once it's stretched actually it's probably easy to show you this way once it's stretched out when it pings back it goes back to the 10 so that means it's got a good recovery whereas some knits you will find once it's stretched it might not go all the way back to what it was like there before so it's something to bear in mind when you're choosing your knit projects so I'm going to talk you through different types of knit fabrics we've got here at Somi Sunshine. We've got a good range, so hopefully that will give you a bit of an idea of um, what different ones are like, um, what their drapes like, um, what patterns are suitable for them. So the most common kind of knit fabric you'll come across is um, cotton jersey. So this one is 95% cotton, 5% elastane. It's really good basic like knit fabric. So really good for like basic t-shirts or it's really good as well for like a lot of children's wear as well. Um, it has what we call a four way stretch. I know it's a bit confusing, but that means that it stretches this way 
and this way, which gives it a four way stretch. So this is one of our lovely cotton jerseys, which is really fun. It's lilac, we love lilac here at Somi Sunshine. It's covered in a beautiful rainbow design. And um, just to give you an example of like a simple jersey top, um, the Jennifer Lauren Vial, I think that's how you pronounce it. Top is really good. It's a nice, simple make. Um, and it's really good if you're new to sewing with knit fabrics. And that's something else to mention with a cotton jersey. If you're new to sewing with knit fabrics, this is a really good one to go for because it's nice and stable. It's not overly stretchy and it's got a good recovery. Um, and you can easily sew it on a regular sewing machine. You don't need to have an overlocker, which some people think, um, to sew knit fabrics with. So the next common jersey fabric you might come across is a viscose jersey. So unlike the cotton jersey, viscose jerseys are a lot more, well, they're normally lighter in weight for starters, but they have the drape that you'd expect from a viscose. So you wanna look for a pattern that requires more kind of drape um, and not a structured kind of finish. So something like the Ebony from Closet Core Patterns is really good. And then another kind of pattern you could look for is the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress. So any sort of dress that's like a wrap dress would work really well with um, a viscose jersey just like I said because it gives you the drape which is what you'd want in that sort of garment um, so because it's quite drapey is a tiny bit hard more difficult to sew with so I just advise taking your time with it again you will find like the cotton jerseys that it has a four-way stretch so it stretches both ways and that's called a four-way stretch um, at Sony Sunshine, we're quite uh, keen to do what we call the boob test. So we stretched all our jerseys before we buy them over like the curvy parts, just to make sure that no white kind of shows through. So like this one, for example, it's a really good quality because you won't, it stretches really well without distorting the print. You'll also find with viscose jerseys, sometimes they might use EcoVero viscose. That's from a company called Lensing, they certify it. And what that means is that the viscose, so the wood that's from, that makes the viscose is from a renewable wood source. And also the way it's manufactured as well, it's more like a closed loop system. So any of the waste is reused um, to make the next fabrics. So that's a more sustainable type of viscose. So it's something to bear in mind. Um, and then we also have a really good range of bamboo jerseys and bamboo jerseys are viscose jerseys so it's the same principle where it's got obviously the lovely drape and movement so same patterns again work really well a loose fitted tee or a wrap dress again they have a really lovely stretch four-way stretch and a good recovery we've got a rainbow of colors in our bamboo jerseys and they're really soft as well because of the bamboo being used. So they're lovely against the skin. So just moving on from viscose jersey and bamboo jersey, we also stock a range of certified tensile jerseys. Tensile is the non-branded tensile word is lyocell. And it's like a form of what you'd call viscose or rayon. It's just with tensile, it's certified by lensing. Um, so unless it's certified by lensing, it can't be called tensile, it's got to be called lyocell. Um, and the reason with that is because in order for it to be a tensile, there's got to be certain steps that are taken place by the manufacturer, such as the way it's produced. So it's produced in a more like environmentally friendly way in a closed loop um, process and also not just the way it's produced, but they also look at how workers are looked after as well. So it takes into account um, the ethics with the production as well. So with Tensile, you know that what's quite nice, as long as it's obviously been properly certified, then you know that it's um, a very sustainable and ethical fabric. So like the viscose jerseys, obviously it's got a lovely drape and movement. So again, the same patterns I showed you before would work really well. 
obviously this is quite a light coloured um, tensile jersey so it'd probably be better for like a top because it might be a bit see-through for bottom half again it's got a four-way stretch and a really good recovery and it's nice and soft and it's the same both of the viscose cottons and the tensile jerseys they're the same on the reverse as they are on the right side as well and like the bamboo jerseys we've got so many different colors in this and we're always restocking our tensile jerseys and just to note at so Many sunshine we will only list a fabric as being tensile if we know that it's being properly certified if we don't have any of that proof of certification, then it will just be listed as Lyocell. So we've got some exciting new French Terries in stock at So Me Sunshine. They are um, organ made from organic cotton, um, which means it's just more sustainable cotton. And with this, these, with a the French Terry, what you're gonna find is that you've got a plain, obviously right side, but with a French terry, what you'll have on the back is it's looped. So it's got a lovely looped back to it. So there will be um, slightly what I call a lighter weight um, fabric. So not as thick as what you'd find with a sweatshirting, but obviously they're heavier than what you'd find with a cotton jersey. So they're kind of like your in-between, especially in the kind of warmer months if you want to make kind of like a jumper or um, some joggers then a French terry is a really good option um, like the cotton jerseys obviously they're obviously they don't have the drape that the viscose jerseys do so they're more stable which means it's a bit easier to sew with but again they have a four-way stretch with a really good recovery and the pattern we thought would work really well was the plateau joggers and shorts by closet core patterns and also the new jumper as well from them would work well with the french terry so like i said because of the looped back it's nice and soft against the skin and so something like a jumper or some joggers would work really well with it and again we've got quite a lot of different colours in stock and sometimes you'll find some fun prints as well so in comparison to the French Terry's loop back jerseys we also stock a good range of sweatshirting jerseys or they might be called on the website a fleece back jersey so with sweatshirting you'll find that on the reverse it'll be a lovely kind of brush back or fleecy type back to it so obviously it's really good in the cooler months when you want a bit of warmth or if you're just wanting to be nice and cozy at home so this is our raspberry pink um, sweatshirting and it's called in the cozy colours we've got a really big range of different colours in the cozy colours and what's quite nice about them as well is that they've got different flecks of colours um, running through them on the right side um, but like I said on the reverse it's just nice and soft so you don't feel any of those kind of like flecks of colour against your skin so they're really really good for jumpers or you could make joggers just bear in mind they will be warmer because of the fleece back these are cotton elastane blend so they're still breathable because of the cotton and they've got a four way stretch again with really good recovery and we have picked out a couple of patterns that would work really well um, one being the Megan Nielsen Yara we love this pattern we actually struggle sometimes to keep it in stock um, it's just a little bit different to your normal like sweatshirt pattern and then another favorite of ours is the South Bank sweater by Nina Lee um, it's a lovely cozy sweatshirt pattern and works really well with the cozy colors so like the patterns we've just shown you they would also work well and these patterns would work well with the french terry it's just it would it will be lighter in weight and not as warm and cozy as something with like a nice soft fleecy back so the best knit to start with when you're brand new to sewing with knit fabric is actually something called a ponte de roma um, you might see it also being just called ponte fabric and that's because it is really it's a lot more structured it's a, like a medium weight knit it's very stable so it's not going to slip anywhere when you're sewing it and like i mentioned before yes you could use what we call an overlocker to sew your knit 
garments but you can just do it on a simple normal sewing machine you just have to obviously use a zigzag stitch because of obviously the stretch with the fabric so we've got quite a few different ponties in stock we have um, some ponties that contain viscose and elastane um, which are slightly higher in price because of the viscose content and then we do have some polyester uh, elastane blends or polyester and viscose bl elastane blends um, so they will be all reflected in the price but with all of them you'll find a lot more of a structured knit um, they still stretch really well um, crosswise um, just a little bit less on the lengthways um, but they're a really good garments for sewing something what you want a little bit more structure to so something like the Soracho, I think that's how, you, if I pronounce that wrong, I do apologize, um, by Deer and Doe. This is a lovely jumpsuit pattern. I've seen so many people make this up in really colorful Ponte de Roma fabrics. And because of the type of structure it is, it works really well for a Ponte. Um, and then you've got the Nini Colottes by Named Patterns. This is a really cool pattern because you can actually use woven and knit fabrics and it tells you like the different steps to take depending on the type of fabric you've chosen. But again, the Ponte de Roma would work really well for the collots here. So with Ponte, you will find that on the right side and the wrong side of the fabric, it's exactly the same. So you haven't got any change in kind of like loop, in the loop back or fleecy back, it's plain both sides. So nice and soft against the skin. Obviously it's thicker and um, so it'll be a bit warmer for the, um, if, if, it's, if you're in summer, you probably don't want to wear a ponte, but in the kind of cooler months, it's a really good fabric to sew with and wear. Um, and like I said, it's a great fabric. If you've been a bit scared to start with sewing with knit fabrics, this is a really good one to start with. This is our teal ponte, which is really, it's always, I think I've always stocked this actually. Um, it's a really popular fabric and it doesn't cost too much. So it's a really good one when you're new to sewing um, with this type of fabric. So thanks for watching guys. I hope that's given you um, some a little bit of information about what a jersey or knit fabric is and the different types of jersey knit fabrics you might come across when you're shopping either online or in person. Um, like I said, at So Me Sunshine, we always um, break down listings for you with the stretch percentage. And also we'll always put in the description where, what the reverse side is like as well, whether it's fleecy or plain and we always try and give you some pattern recommendations. But hopefully this video has helped you along with your sewing journey. And I really hope that um, us showing you how to work out the stretch percentage will help you as well. We'll do a blog post as well that will go along with the video at some point. Um, so then you've got something to reference back to. Um, anyway, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye.